Hey everyone, in this video we will learn about sparse tables. Our problem that we are going to solve is that you are given with an array and you will be given with Q queries. You would like to find out what is the minimum element in the range L to R. This is called range minimum queries. You would like to solve these in O1 time and there will be no point updates to the array. Now what is the sparse table? A sparse table is a data structure that is built over an array and it stores some information about intervals of the array. Not all intervals but some of the intervals and that is why it's known as sparse tables because the intervals that it stores information about are sparse. They are dispersed in the array. Now what is an interval of the array? Any L, R pair of integers is an interval of the array where L is between 1 to N and N is the size of the array and R is between L to N. This is known as an interval of the array. So 5,8 is an interval, 1,3 is an interval, something like that. Okay, so now we know what is an interval and we know what a sparse table is. It's a data structure built over an array for which we want to answer queries and it stores information about some of the intervals of the array. Now, what do I mean by some of the intervals? Which intervals to be precise? So a sparse table will store information about all the intervals L, R such that the size of these intervals, the width of this interval that is w equals to r minus l plus 1. For all the intervals whose width is exactly a power of 2, so w equals to 2 power j. So any interval whose size or width is exactly a power of 2, sparse table will store information about it. So if I'm talking about range sum queries, then sparse table would store the sum of the range or sum of the elements in the range L to R given that the width of this uh, interval is a power of 2. For example sake, I would, I would be storing information about the interval 1, 1. I am solving range sum queries. I would store what is the sum of the elements in the range 1, 1. What is the sum of the elements in the range 1, 2, 1, 4. Because this interval is of size 2 power 0. This interval is of size 2 power 1. 2 power 2. I would not store information about 1 comma 5 because this width is not a power of 2 but I would store 1 comma 8, 1 comma 16. I would store information about the interval 2 comma 2 because this is width uh, 2 power 0. I would store about 2 comma 3. I would store about 2 comma 5 but I would not store about 2 comma 4. So I would store information or if I am talking about range sum queries I would store sum of all the intervals whose width is exactly a power of 2 in my sparse table. This is the information that I'm going to store. So to be more precise, let me take you to another page. So what is a sparse table? It is a two-dimensional data structure, table ij, where table at ij stores information about the interval starting at index i and is of exactly the width 2 power j. Here j can be 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, as long as this thing, this r or i plus 2 power j minus 1 stays less than or equal to n. So that's the major idea of a sparse table. This is r less than or equal to n. Right, it would store all such information about all such ij, which are exact, which, which intervals are exactly equal to some power of 2. Now the question would be, how does this help us answer our queries? Of course, otherwise it's not useful. So imagine I'm solving range sum queries and I have this table T and T at ij stores the sum of the elements in the range i to i plus 2 per j minus 1. This is an interval of width exactly 2 per j. Okay, let's say I have this table T of T and T ij stores this, sum of the elements in the range this. And I want to find out what is the sum of the elements in the range, let's say 5 to 26. This is an interval of width 26 minus 5 plus 1 that is 22. This particular width I do not it is not a power of 2, so table t does not know the sum of the elements in this range. But sparse table has this uh, property that it can use the intervals that it has to generate any other interval L, R. How? So any interval L, R is going to have a width W. In this particular case, the width is 22. <clears throat> and any integer can be written as a binary number 
or it can be written in its binary form. So 22 can be written as 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0. And if you think about it, I've broken down this interval of size 22 into three intervals. Each interval is a, is a power of 2. Each interval has a width which is a power of 2. This interval has a width of 16 that is 2 to the power 4. This interval has a width of um, I guess 2 part 2 or 4 that is 2 part 2. And then this interval has a width of size 2 that is 2 power 1. So I've broken this interval of size 22 into three intervals each of size something power 2. Okay. Let's see how I can use this. So I know that 22 is these three intervals. I'll take this interval first. This is an interval of size 16. So I will take t of 5 comma 4 and this would be the sum of the elements starting from the index 5 all the way up to the index 20. These 16 elements. t of 5 comma 4 would store the sum of these elements. I would get that. So that this is done by getting t54. Now I'm bothered about the elements in the range 21 to 26. I know that this particular range, I can take two more intervals. One is of size four and one is of size two. So I can take another interval of size, starting from 21 and is of size two, not two, four, two power two. So that would be all the elements starting from here and ending at 21 comma 21 plus two power two minus one, that would be 21 comma 24. And this thing would give me the sum of these elements. I would add it to T54. And finally, I want the sum of these elements from 25 to 26. I know that my interval 22 broke down into three intervals and one interval is still left. That is of size 2 power 1. So I would take T25 comma 1. That is basically the interval starting from 25 up till 25 plus 2 power 1 minus 1 and that is 25 comma 26 and this this way I was able to break down my interval of size 22 into three intervals each of size something power 2 and some of those intervals was given to me by this t so this way you can see that you can break down any interval of size w into less than equal to log of w intervals so your query can be answered in log w time so good up till here, but how can I build this kind of table? Also, how can I answer range minimum queries in over time? So to build this table, we're obviously going to use dynamic programming. Let's see how. So imagine that you had this interval. Okay. You want to find out dp of ij. And this is basically the interval that starts at index i, ends at index i plus 2 power j minus 1. This is an interval of exactly the size 2 power j. How do I find out dp of ij that is some of the elements in this range? This interval of size 2 power j actually breaks down into two intervals, each of size 2 power j minus 1. Isn't it? Because 2 power j equal to 2 power j minus 1 plus 2 power j minus 1. And imagine that I had the sum of these elements beforehand. And I do have them. It is nothing but dp of i comma j minus 1. The interval that starts at index i and has the size exactly equal to 2 power j minus 1. Is the, that the sum of those elements would be dp i comma j minus 1. Plus, what about this interval? This is the interval that starts at dp of i plus 2 power j, this index, and has the length exactly 2 power j minus 1. So j minus 1. So dp of i comma j can be written like this. And I also need a base case for dynamic programming. Base case would be dp of i comma 0. An interval that starts at index i and end at, ends at index i or is of size 2 power 0 that is 1. That would be the element ai itself. Let me show the code to build a table. It's pretty simple. So imagine that I'm building this table. Max n is the maximum elements I expect my vector to contain. And this is the data vector I get. So I'm trying to build dp of l comma w. So the idea is that my interval starts at index l. And it ends at, uh, and it is of width 2 to the power w. 
So it obviously ends at index r, where r is equals to l plus 2 to the power w minus 1. Okay, I'm talking about this in uh, this interval now. The r is this and the l is this. Now if r is greater than or equal to n, I'm talking about zero based uh, indexing now. So if it's r is greater than or equal to n, I should not uh, even think about storing information about this interval and I can break out now. Otherwise, if w equal to zero, that means I'm talking about an interval of size one. Then that would be simply the, the element at data vector l. And otherwise, I would take the elements, <clears throat> the first half of two power, the first two power w minus one elements, and the next two power w minus one elements. Also, this table is for answering range minimum queries. Similarly, you can make for sum also by adding these two elements here. But this is how you build your sparse table, and that's set. Your sparse table is ready for answering a lot of queries now. Now the obvious question is how to answer range minimum queries in open time. You can take this simple hint and try on your own, but I'll explain it anyway. So imagine that you had this range that you wanted to find out the minimum for range minimum. Okay. And let's say that uh, this L comma R is not a power of two, of course. But let's say that this interval here from L to some L dash. Let's call this, uh, this is a power of two. The size of this interval is a power of two. And I have direct this, the information about this directly in my table. Imagine it. And a similar sized interval that starts at here and ends at R is also a power of two. And I have the information of this interval also in my table. Imagine that I do have this information. Then I can take the minimum of the interval L comma L dash and r dash comma r the minimum of this interval and i would take the minimum of these two intervals to get the minimum of l comma r because this overlapping portion doesn't bother to me the minimum doesn't care if the, these elements are taken once or twice so i can take this interval and this another interval overlapping one just find the minimum of these two and the minimum of then this and this and I would have the minimum of L comma R. Think about why I cannot do the same thing for sum and solve it efficiently. Because if I do the same thing for sum and find out the sum of the elements in the range L comma L dash and R dash comma R, then I would have this, these elements twice in my sum, which is not desirable. But for min, that is okay. Because if I was trying to find out the minimum of elements 5 comma 6 comma 7, I am okay if I find out the minimum of the elements 5 comma 6 comma 6 comma 7. The appearance of 6 twice doesn't change the fact that the minimum is still 5. But in sum, that is something that does matter. Now you might wonder how to find out this L dash and R dash. This is your interval from L to R. And this is the width of your interval W. Okay, you want to find out this point L dash so that this interval from L to L dash is so of width W dash. Okay. And W dash is a power of two. So W dash equals to two power G. Now W dash is as large as possible, but less than equal to W. So W dash is less than or equal to W. And the definite condition I want is that W dash should be a power of two or two power J. If I'm able to find out this thing j, then I can simply answer my query as this t of l comma j comma minimum of t of l comma j this interval and t of r minus you go back r minus 2 power j and then from there you go back 2 power j steps and from here you take 2 power j sized interval that ends at r. Among these two, I will simply take the minimum. The idea is that how do you find out this j efficiently? Let me show you how you can find this j efficiently. Once you can find that, you are done. So if w dash equals to your 2 power j, then w is 
less than equal to 2 power j is less than equal to w and w is less than 2 power j plus 1 okay so if you take the logarithm of w you would get a value that is between j and j plus 1 and if you actually this log value would be in decimals if you remove the fractional part or you lower it down then you would get j and j is equals to w dash that's it just take the logarithm of the width and you are done how do you take the logarithm efficiently so logarithm by definition is how many times do i divide x by 2 to reach 1 this is log base 2 how many times do you divide x by 2 to reach 1 so that would mean that log of 1 is how many times do i divide 1 by 2 to reach 1 you should divide it 0 times right it's already 1 how many times do i divide 2 by 2 to reach 1 that is 1 in that way so i'll just show you how to find out the log efficiently and how to answer the queries and then we're done to find out the log efficiently log of 1 is 0 and log of i is one time you divide i by 2 to reach i uh, you divide i by 2 to reach i by 2 and then you see what how many times do you need to divide i by 2 to reach 1 that's it this is log of i and this can be calculated in big of n time then your queries can be solved like this that's it each query can be solved in o1 time using this idea so guys hopefully you like this video now as a challenge or as a homework for you what you have to do is you have to implement this class sparse table there's a constructor that takes in a vector on which it builds a sparse table and then you can you should use this sparse table to find out the sum of the elements in the range l2r because for main i've already written the code so you can try to find out the sum of the elements in the range l2r and this query would run in logarithm time log of n okay so guys make sure that you hit the like button subscribe to the channel and also let me know in the comments if you like the video and bye till then